Hello everyone. My name is Devrim Yilmaz. I am a cloud uh, engineer working for Turkcell. With me, there is Saigon Bakhtar from our cloud operations team. Today, uh, we are going to present you about Turkcell over history and experience. Hi, I'm Saigon. I work as a cloud systems administrator at Turkcell. Before we start, we, look, we would like to share a quick information about Turkcell. Turkcell is a digital operator headquartered in Turkey, serving its customers with its unique portfolio of digital services along with voice, messaging, data, IPTV services on its mobile and fixed networks. Uh, Turkcell Group companies operate in five different countries, which are Turkey, Ukraine, Belarus, Northern Cyprus, and Germany. Turkcell is the only New York Stock Exchange listed company in Turkey since 2010. You can find detailed information in our website about Turkcell and its services. First, I am going to share our business objectives why Turkcell needed a solution like Ovirt. Although Turkcell managed different virtualization platforms for many years, there is always an interest to follow and evaluate new technologies. Alternate solutions compatible with Turkcell operational and security standards. This is an obligatory requirement to integrate approved information technology solutions to Turkcell. Turkcell has operational and security standards to follow and apply all required regulatory and compliance activities. Dissemination of open source infrastructure technologies within the company. Although Turkcell owns and manages perpetual software license products, there is always an interest to disseminate open source products in its technology life cycle including infrastructure layers, competitive infrastructure with cost advantage. To provide a competitive infrastructure, all companies like Turkcell try to avoid from vendor locking and create manageable alternative solutions in their infrastructure. In this presentation, we will be talking about how Turkcell has decided to manage and use Overt visualization platform. It will be a high-level presentation, but feel free to contact up us about any questions. So let's get started. To better understanding, we will have five main sections to outline presentation. These sections are research and development, go live phase one, go live phase two private cloud automation, and go-live RHV. So, research and development. This section is the evaluation and de decision phase. We have spent plenty of time, including POC tests, to reach the final decision. Before stating the selection reasons of OVIRT, Open source and OVIR platform have some motivation and risk factors for better understanding. Of course, there will be more factors, but these are the most important ones in our case. Mobil motivation factors. Cost. Reducing costs are the main factor, especially for managers and decision makers, but it should be considered as total cost of ownership not the only software. Uh, participation is a new era and participation is the key of success. It will help you to be a part of a big community. Regulation. Of course, licensing provides you to have the source code, but on the other hand, you don't have code rights for intellectual property. Independence. Independence means no wonder looking for us. You may have alternative options to apply for open source solutions. Uh, expertise, you can have exports out of comfort zone in your organization. This would lead you to solution, not only the product. 
risk factors security security concerns are the main reason why most comp companies are hesitant to use open source software the power of open source code is open seems vulnerable to security threats and more likely to be copied although community has more power to solve all security related issues it requires extra effort to chase and apply quality again it is the same as security it should follow the industrial standards. It should have roadmaps to add new features and be competitive with other solutions or products. Compliance. With open source software, license requirements is necessary, but often overlooked. Ensuring the avoidance of such copyleft effect can become an essential element of an open source compliance process. So understand before starting and follow the updates regarding compliance related. Support. Without third party support, you have to find a workaround for any problem in timely manner. So you should agree the risk of open issues with all parties, including management in your organization. And you should have a plan to mitigate risks. Worst practice. If there is no published or shared back practices how to deploy the solution, this means you have to do it yourself from the rough. This would make you chattering and force you to start from the beginning again. Of course, it will say it will take some time to understand and handle pressure from other parties. Why OVIRT? Open source licensing. OVIRT uses Apache License 2.0 as the primary license and its all new projects are strongly encouraged to use AL 2.0. Turkcell is compliant with this open source license. Uh, second is community contribution. OVIRT is a community project. It, it has contributors, supporters, sponsors and providers. Uh, third one is the, the same roadmap with commercial product. Red Hat uses OVIRT as the upstream version of its commercial virtualization product, uh, which is Red Hat virtualization. Support via subscription if required. If the critical services require third-party support, there is an option to switch commercial virtualization product. Adequate features of enterprise management. When it is compared with the industrial uh, leader commercial products, main features are enough to support enterprise management. The last one is REST API support. OVIRT API package provides application programming interface for the OVIRT engine. Turkcell aims to integrate all infrastructure platforms using automation and orchestration. REST API support is critical for us. There are also some difficulties to deploy for new infrastructure solutions. The main difficulty is the integration with current tools and solutions. Mostly licensed products do not support open source solutions and integrations have some extra effort cost. Support is another difficulty. Although, although you have sponsor support and agreed with other internal party, parties, you should find a workaround or solution to solve the problem as soon as possible. Most, mostly customers are happy and don't want to change their comfort zones. And you may need to convince them whenever they face with any problem, even the problem is not related with your platform. what we achieved. In this phase, after deciding to prove OVIRT platform, uh, we have steps to follow for testing. In this testing, virtualization and test and development teams work together, building of POC environment, isolated and unfragile environment with initial requirements are crit critical to build for this kind of infrastructure testing. Sponsor support is the key to obtain required resources. 
V2V migration. We have an existing virtualization platform and we migrated virtual service to over it for testing for purposes. We have an existing virtualization platform. We migrated our virtual servers to OVIRT for testing purposes. Upgrade tests starting with version 4.3.2. We wanted to ease off up upgrades without any error interruption. So we started POC from previous versions and completed upgrade scenarios in some periods. Functional tests, we have prepared a list of the functional tests. These test requirements are exactly the, the same as in use virtualization products. We tested scenarios included both hardware and software at the same time. Backup alternative solutions. Backup is the most critical part of any failback scenarios for the out of platform. For PUC, we only tested functionally and decide, decided later to keep out POC phase. Although there are different solutions which supports OIT platforms, Turkcell has enterprise backup infrastructure and our main aim was OIT backup to integrate OIT backup with this centralized backup platform. Go phase one. Uh, this, phase, this section is the first live migration phase. Before the ink and investment, we planned controlled migration process to OVIRT platform with unused hardware. Again, with sponsor support, we had some unused hardware to build a new OVIRT platform for test and development environment. Uh, unfortunately, Building of a new OVIRT platform with unused hardware step takes some time to physical installation, network and storage configurations. But again, the key is for the success is to have the uh, compatible infra with decided topology. Uh, sections of virtual mach machines for migration. Uh, test and development teams selected different types of virtual machines for migration. Migration of VMs using V2V. In this period of time, VMs was migrated and monitored as determined. Uh, luckily, OVIRT has some new updates in our uh, phase one, and uh, we completed version upgrade again from version uh, 4.36 to version 3.8. Uh, uh, go no go decision. We had determined period about uh, three, four, four months to monitor. After that, we had go decision. This this was the final decision to continue with Ovirt and its migrations. Uh, Migration was continued until uh, computing resource reached its limits. This, is, this was also uh, quite helpful to see OVIRT under stress. Again, uh, to continue to backup solution selection, uh, we tested some alternative backup solutions, including open source tools, and then invited our backup team to our project. Uh, this section is all or nothing phase for us. We were ready to migrate all agreed resources to OVIRT platform. It was again obtaining hardware and physical uh, installation step uh, is the first part for us. I think this is the most time consuming step for waiting. And again, luckily OVIRT has some new updates and we completed version upgrade again from version .38 to 4.3.10. Accepting new VM requests. In this phase, we decide to accept all new uh, virtual machine requests to our new OVIRT platform. This was extra cost, but all requests have done manually without automation. 
all virtual machines migrated to a virtual platform uh, in this phase, and it was total about uh, 1,000 virtual machines around. Uh, after joining of uh, backup team to our project, we finalized uh, backup solution using vProtect. Now, uh, my colleague Saigon will talk about our OVIR topology. I would like to speak briefly about our environments and our OVIR journey. Firstly, we have started with a small POC cluster in order to test the capabilities of the OVIR. We wanted to see if it, it meets our expectations. We have tested for a period and we were pretty satisfied with results and decided to go with OVIR for our development and test environment. We installed our environment with 10 hosts that have small resources. We migrated for VMs from another virtualization platform to Ovid with embedded V2V extension in Ovid. When we had any failed migration, the reason of failure was explained in import logs of conversion host. Find the host that is responsible for conversion, resolve the re reason, and remigrate. That was all. We have migrated approximately 500 VMs. I can say it wasn't so difficult process. When you gained experience from previous failures, you know what you should be careful of during migrations. In order to isolate local area network and DMZ for security reasons, we had to separate hosts, VMs, storage domains, and networks. It was easy to isolate hosts, VMs, and networks in cluster level, but we had to create different data centers in order to separate storage domains. By the time our environments grow up, grew up fastly, we decided to add six new hosts with stronger resources. We had to create a new cluster because these hosts CPU family were higher than the old cluster. In order to avoid conflictions and crashes because of CPU family, we had to shut down VM and edit VM C, uh, cluster, fam, cluster and power on. With managerial decision, it is decided to grow in the C2 in different sites. And nextly, migrate VMs to this DC2 site. We have installed DC with the same infrastructural architecture as the first DC. In total, we have 650 VMs in first data center and 250 VMs in second data center, and we have approximately 1,000 VMs. In future, we are going to migrate from first class first data center site to second data center site with export and import maths. As our backup solution, we have decided to use vProtect. There, there are several methods in this solution. We decided to go with the SSH transfer method. In this method, all data transfers are from hypervisors via SSH. This method has incremental backup capabilities. We have decided to create one vProtect node VM per cluster. The data is transferred from hypervisors to vProtect node and from vProtect node to our DD boost location. For the rest restore process, it uses Ovid Image IO proxy service via Ovid engine. If I mention about backup times, the backup times are satisfying. For example, an average 250 gigabyte VM takes approximately 25 minutes for full backup and within 5 to 10 minutes for incremental backups. Now uh, I will continue with the private, private cloud automation. This is the coding phase uh, for automation and orchestration. Until automation, we had some time to manage new requests manually. So we had more pressure from other teams to commit given former SLAs. 
Uh, REST API development was done with uh, version 4 for our uh, end-to-end integration. Uh, also, all development was achieved by our cloud teams. So we did all development using internal resources. Because of that, we had needed extra time for uh, development to complete this process. Uh, after automation test, we deploy it to a production environment and uh, we don't have any problem and our automation process uh, worked as we planned. Uh, Go Live RHV is our uh, last phase for this deployment. Uh, in this phase, uh, OIRT help us to use RHV for uh, OpenShift infrastructure decision. Uh, the success of OIRT migration uh, is the key for RHV. Turkcell has decided Red Hat products for each infra layer to provide support using a spoke. Uh, again, Saigon will uh, talk about RHV topology. We have two data centers at Red Hat Virtualization. One of them is for test and standby environments, and the other is for production yeah. environments. We use RHV infrastructures for our OpenShift environments. We have both OpenShift 3.0 11 and OpenShift 4.4 installed for each data center. Installer provisioned infrastructure support for Red Hat virtualization is available with OpenShift 4.4. So we use this, this method in our environments. OVIRT and RHV also have GPU virtualization support with NVIDIA GPU cards. Our artificial intelligence and data science teams use these vGPU pinned virtual machines as OpenShift nodes. We are using these GPU hosts together with other hosts, but we have plans to migrate and we have plans to separate them to different clusters in order to isolate OpenShift nodes as environments grow faster. It was easy to install and maintain Red Hat virtualization environment with our OVIRT experiences. In this OVIRT project journey, we are very satisfied, but we still miss some features in migration, upgrade, and automation areas. For example, it will be nice to have VTUV online migration, as we are still migrating large number of VMs from different platforms, and this requires a lot of downtime. Even with the offline migration, we are not able to migrate our RHEL 8 VMs as this is not supported in version 4.3. This is another option we are looking forward to. We would like to move from version 4.3 to 4.4, but there is currently no simple process to achieve this. It is required to install a new clusters and move your VMs. It would really make our lives a lot easier if we could have an in-place upgrade option. As I have mentioned, we have integrated OVIRT with our cloud orchestration platform and do an automatic VM provisioning. We need to run some comments and capture their outputs. Currently, we cannot achieve this with the current guest tools. These are some improvement areas that we see from our experience, and we are exploring ways to solve this with OVIRT community. Thank you for joining us for this presentation. So you can reach us via email for any questions.